welcome to today's episode of design with pam today we're going to be designing this page for an ngo design style is a an editorial website design concept right i took it back and because ngos websites always have a lot of content or a lot of write-up to read i try to make it in a way that is interesting i put emphasis where there's need to be emphasis and i give the website layouts and just something easy for people to look at and then interact with so today we're going to be designing this you can apply this concept in designing different pages of our website so let's get right into it we're going to do is to select our frame so i'm going to go to this toolbar here and click on this particular one and choose frame you can easily just click f on your keyboard to activate the frame tool and then select the frame that you want to use here trust me design is actually interesting actually easy all you have to do is maybe think, think outside the box certain times and don't always have a boring website i'm going to create this side we have the logo here i'm just going to copy the logo here if you have it on your desktop you can simply go here come to this main menu go to file and then select place image it takes you right to your file manager so i'm going to paste the logo that i have here but before i begin the design i like having my layout grid so that i can work very well within the grid lines because if, if you're just starting out design or you've been designing to get a very perfect design you have to follow the grid line make sure there's equal spacing the spacings are great the fonts are great all of those things combined gives you a perfect design so i'm going to add my website um, layout so let me show you the what i'm using here so for the top roll i'm using a 56 god i stand this four then I'm using a 12 grid column. The width is 76 and got is 32. And for my bottom roll, I'm using a 56 also. All right. So you can just copy out or you can just replicate my layout grid style that I have here on your own design. So let's go straight into it. The idea behind this kind of design is like I'm trying to create different layouts. How you have grid lines when you're designing. I put some form of grid lines to just section things here and there just to help the mind or help users focus on a particular thing at a point and since there might be a lot of write-ups to read it's easier when you see pictures then you see some write-up so the pictures are not arranged in the conventional way where you have it maybe it's going to copy this whole section here and then maybe write up here if you're going to design on pages i can also suggest that maybe you take you use different sizes of this image now you can see i use this size you can use another size in different places but let them be more like for some form of uniformity within the whole designs you're doing let it not be that they are distinct or different kind of design all in one place let them be some kind of uniformity if you use this style here try and replicate it some other place and make sure you're using the same spacing spacing you're using in a particular place make sure you use it all across in similar places all right so the first thing is the first thing you see here is this rectangle i'm going to go back and put on the ui here show ui all right i just right clicked on my mouse and then those options popped up and i you can either show the whole navigation menu thing or you can hide them so the first thing is to select this rectangle right i'm going to go and to the toolbar and i'm going to select the rectangle so the height of the rectangle is actually 56 i'm going to use a 56 just where we have our grid lines the height is 56 all right so i'm going to bring this one down a bit then i'm going to change the color so to change the color and um, once i select the particular element i want to change colors to once you select anything here the options you see here on the section is going to be different so you can see i selected the rectangle and you see all of this if i select the frame itself you're going to see another option a different option here so i'll go back and select the rectangle again and i'm going to change the color i'm going to go to fill i'm going to take this speaker and i'm going to pick up this color that i already used here so you can color copy the color code here and implement in your design all right so the next step is to create this call to action button right so we're going to click t on our keyboard and i'm going to type donate so once i type 
done it this is the font i'm using and i'm using it at a bold in font 20 then i'm going to click shift a to add to add an auto layout to it and i want the height of this to be a 52 then i want the width to be 183 let's say 184 so it's going to occupy these two two grid lines here all right so i'm going to add a few color here you can see there's no few color on it then i'm going to add a few color click on this plus sign here i'm going to change the few color i want it to be black but i'm not going to use pure black i'm going to be using this color this color is 101010 so you can copy it then i'm going to hold on to my command on control button then click on the text inside this frame and i'm going to change the color to white right i'm just i just drag this up here to change the color all right i think we're getting somewhere then i want to create an auto layer between these two so it's going to be like my navigation bar so i'll select this call to action button and i'll select this logo that i have here and click on shift a then i'm going to make sure that it's centralized just drag it up here to meet this other one all right so the next thing i'm going to do is to click l on my keyboard to draw a line l activate the line tool then i'm going to hold on to shift so that i can get a perfect line and drag it to the end i'm going to also give it a color same color that i used for this place then i'm going to ch and make sure that the spacing between this call to action button and my logo thingy is between the line and that is going to be let's make it 28 is great all right so how do you see the space just click on the line and then hold on to shift to select the other event you want to measure the distance with all right so you come to this section this place it shows you the spacing between one object with the other object all right so the next thing is to type nigerian girl in stem i'm going to click on t on my keyboard to activate the test tool nigerian so i'm using all caps all right if you're watching this and you've gained value so far please subscribe to my youtube channel my name is pamela the designer you can find me on instagram tiktok linkedin my name is pamela on harry on linkedin you can find me there and of this tutorial i'll leave something for you to take home as an assignment or a test then you can give me feedback, send it directly to me, send a Figma link to me on Instagram, then I can grade you. Yes. So for this test here, this bow test that I have here, I'm just going to make it as much as 64. I'm going to increase the font size to be 64. Then I'm going to, the line height, I'm going to increase the line height to, let's say a one a 110. So for for this letter spacing i don't want it to have any spacing great so why i did that i wanted i want to achieve that firm look with this test here so you can actually change the way a test appear even though you choose a particular font right let me show you i'm going to duplicate this two here so for this one if i want to manipulate this test maybe to give me a different kind of look i can go to the line spacing and increase the line spacing you can see it's the same font i'm using the same size but they all look different and i can as well reduce this line spacing here to get another kind of look so you should learn how to use the section the line letter spacing and the line height section to plate your phone to give it a different kind of look all right all right so we have it here then i'm going to make sure that spacing no the line height is just a lot let's leave it at 84 all right so for this one i'm going to the spacing between this one and this one let's give it a spacing of 64 i think that's good and i make sure that it sits right on these grid lines 64 is great so i'm going to create another line or rather i'm going to duplicate this i'm just going to click on that line and then hold on to my option or alt button and then drag down but i want this particular line to have more weight so i'm going to come to drug section here and then increase it to be as much as four let's say four All right but i'm going to change the color i'm going to detach my style here and then change the color to can I just copy the color code that i'm typing All right then i'm going to click on it and then duplicate it again and give the second one a color a black color then i'm going to bring them together i don't want the spacing let the spacing be just a 14 but i'm going to increase this the stroke for this one to be as much as a five right so the next thing is to create this test you're seeing here 
it has it says our stand i'm going to click on t on my keyboard and type our stand let me do that again t right we use the font the font we use here is this same font but we're going to use a size 16 20 let's make use of a size 18 then i'm going to change back my line height to be auto i don't need to have more height right so we have this here then i'm going to go ahead and copy the test that we inputted here i'm just going to right click on it and then command c ctrl c and i'm going to also hit t on my keyboard and i'm going to drag or form a box here a text box and i'm going to paste what i have here i'm going to make some adjustments because i want it to occupy this six grid lines here just like we have here all right so i'm going to select this one while i select this one, i'm going to hold on to my shift key and i'll select the second one and click on shift a to create an auto layout so once you create an auto layout you can actually see the spacing between each of the items here so this is where it is then i can change the spacing to let's give it a 32 32 looks great then i'll make sure that the spacing between this one and the line here is a 72 72 is good or i can let's make it a 64 64 is great but let's adjust this test again I can just make adjustments here so basically what i do when i'm designing is that i like using a particular spacing system so i start with a 16 spacing so if it's closely very closely related items and i can give it a a four a six i just try to go with a multiple of between four multiple of four if i'm starting with 16 then if i'm going below that i make sure that it's divisible by two i'm an even number person right there's a system i think i think when you keep designing you just understand that you just just know the spacing systems offhand right so i use a 16 spacing i use a 28 spacing i also use a 32 i use a 64 72 and the list goes on and on so that just it and i make sure i follow my grid lines too so the next step is to create this image thing you're seeing here so i use the rectangle i'm going to create a shape this is going to take up let's say six of six grid lines here so i make sure that it's aligned to the grid line make sure that it's aligned to the grid line here all right so the height i want to give it a height of 232 this is okay then i'm going to find an image here i'm just going to go to pixels it's, it's just a plugin just right click on your mouse and go to plugins if you don't have pixels on your plugin you just, just go to manage plugins here and then type pixels to add it to your saved plugins so i'm just going to type ngo to find any image that speaks to ngos remember that when you're creating when you're creating a design ensure that your design is your your image quality is great and your image speaks to whatever you're designing to the brand and all of that don't go using any image because it take maybe you're tired of searching for an image searching for an image is another tax on its own but there are several platforms where you can get free free images like pixels is one you also have unsplash those are great places but i also recommend that if you're designing for a brand it's also best that they have or they get pictures of their own or they buy pictures that are not free pictures from let's say iStock. they have great pictures there and they are not common but if you use this random pictures here there's a high chance that it's going to be common and every other person is using it on their website so i'm just going to click on this to chuck it into my free, my rectangle here so the thing is for you to have it placed rightly on your rectangle ensure that you you the rectangle or the frame is actually selected while you click on any of the images from the plugin all right so i'm just going to use any picture at all here for the purpose of this tutorial you can see that this picture this is not even great because this third person's this is being cropped out i don't know any design trick that will allow you to crop out someone's face maybe you can show a part of it just to intrigue users to want to know more but not cutting out the person's head totally but we're just going to make do with this for the purpose of this tutorial all right so i'm going to duplicate this image here by holding on to my option key or my alt key and i'm going to drag it to this place i make sure that the spacing between this rectangle and the line here is let's give it a 32 
which is great all right so i'm going to change the image here i'll select the rectangle and i'll choose an image here so if you want to crop an image right or you want to edit the particular image maybe move it around let me select this one so come to this field section you can see that you have your first field and you also have the image that you've imputed click on it and come here click the drop down and select crop so you can adjust the image accordingly maybe if you want this guy's face to show here right right we're good now so the next thing is to create this ng um test here and this arrow here so i'm going to click on t and i'm going to type ngrs community outreach i'm going to leave it at 16 and at bold then i'm going to click on go to my plugin and go to hero icons because i want to get this particular icon here then at this the icon all right then i'm going to hold on to this i'm going to make sure i select this this arrow is being selected you can see the arrow is not within the frame and that's why you can see the 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 naming of the arrow here but if i chuck it back into the frame that we're using it disappears all right so i'm going to click on it and then sell hold on to my shift key and select the test and i'm going to click click on shift a to create an auto layout and then make sure that it is centered so i'm going to make sure that i select this frame that i've created this text here and this button here that points then i'm going to also select this frame i'm going to create an auto layout and make sure that the spacing between 28 is great all right so i'm going to duplicate this one here because we have something similar here but it shows it says our impact right so i try as much as possible to give users a lot of cues to say that something is clickable maybe not just the arrow sometimes i go ahead as much as putting and to underline the test maybe with a different color just to show that this is clickable the reason i do this or the reason it has become a part of me is because it has become a part of of me is because there was one time i was designing for a category of users and when i design cards and stuff when i do like a usability test most of the users don't tend to know where to click even though it's a card i put a mount i put arrows and it's just obvious that cards are mostly clickable right that's the behavior on websites and stuff but they don't click it and at the end of the day uh, when you look at the us analytics it just shows that people are not proceeding further because it was more like an investment company right people were not proceeding further and it suggested that because of the user experience people don't know that they can proceed further to make further investments that was when it became a thing like all my cars i tried to put arrows call to action button shouting click me click me so depend on the person or on the user or the group you're designing for that will inform your some certain things that you input on the design right so i'm going to also select this and select this then make sure that the spacing is 28 just like they have there and i'll create an auto layout i think this is fine so the last the last thing i want to show you now is i'm going to put here is to Hold on to my option button and drag this down here. I'm going to make sure I drag it down here. And I'm going to go to this alignment section and click on this button just to center align it. So the only thing left here is this whole thing that I created, right? So I'm going to give you some cue. You can actually do it on your own. Send me the Figma link on my Instagram at Pamela the Designer. I'm going to review and give you feedback just input this particular section tell me the spacing that you use and tell me the color that you used here for this line here and this is the color that i use you can choose any other color and tell me why you used it, that particular color and why you didn't use black right then we can i can do a review for you just create the section generally that's your assignment and i hope this has been impactful and if you did enjoy or you learned one or two things from my video today please 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 subscribe to my youtube channel you can share this video with any other person who wants to be a ui ux designer it's going to help the person and please subscribe to my channel thank you